In this video, I'm going to show you the differences between charcoal and graphite and how to use them both in a cohesive manner. If you've used both materials, then you already know charcoal leaves a sketchy looking blend as opposed to graphite, which is smoother. And because of this, both materials don't work together easily. However, both materials have their strengths and weaknesses, and I'll show you how to use them both to make them work together. My name is Miracle, and I make realistic pencil drawings. Charcoal is more frequently used for dramatic effects in sketches, while graphite is typically used for precision. Due to its molecular structure, charcoal breaks easily under pressure but leaves behind a dark matte finish. Graphite on the other hand doesn't break easily but leaves a glossy finish that reflects light at certain angle. Personally, I don't like this because the darkest areas tend to reflect more light, which kind of defeats the purpose of having really dark tones. I want my drawings to retain their tonal values regardless of the viewing angles. But let's move on to our topics for today. First is how to achieve a smooth finish using charcoal. To do this, there are a few things you need to consider. Number one is application. Number two is blending materials. Number three is paper. And number four is drawing size. Okay, so number one, application. For application, there are three ways I apply charcoal, which is directly with a brush and with cotton wool. Applying charcoal directly to the paper is the least effective way because the paper tooth is usually very visible and you would have to add more layers of charcoal as well as using a proper blending tool to get the smooth to get that smooth effect. There are two other ways I get around this which are one, I use a smooth paper. Two, by optical illusion. But every technique has its downside and I would explain this further in the video. As for graphite, the same principles apply except for the fact that graphite generally has a smoother finish compared to charcoal but with a reflective downside. However, there are ways to reduce these effects like not applying too much pressure when you draw, applying graphite powder with cotton wool or a soft sponge, or using a paper with a little bit more texture. Number two, blending materials. For this part, I like to use brushes, cotton wool, q-tips, blending stumps, and sometimes my hand. But I only use my hand for areas that are totally black. Brushes are a great way to get a smooth finish with charcoal while maintaining some accuracy, as brushes come in different shapes and sizes, and they allow you to choose between small brushes um, when you need precision or large brushes when you need to cover large areas. There are two ways to use brushes which are you can either use them to blend your already applied charcoal pencils or you can use them to apply charcoal powder directly basically allows you to blend the work as you go i find this method very effective because at the first stage of the drawing you will be blocking large areas to build form before detailing this process also allows you to fill up the paper tooth just enough that when it's time to detail, your work would feel a bit smoother, which is very important for detailing. As for cotton wool and q-tips, both of these materials do the same thing. A piece of cotton wool is great for blending large areas of charcoal, but a q-tip is precise for smaller areas. The third thing on the list is paper. Paper is the most important thing to consider when working with charcoal. Unlike graphite, charcoal does not adhere to every type of paper easily as it creates fine powder that fall off your paper when you blend unless you work on a horizontal surface. However, this doesn't mean you cannot use a smooth paper for charcoal because you can. It all depends on your drawing technique and how much detail you want to achieve. A very smooth paper will allow for very precise detailing, but you wouldn't be able to work with a lot of layers as you would have a hard time keeping the charcoal on the paper. A very rough paper, on the other hand, would hold the charcoal properly as well as allow you to build several layers, which uh, improves depth of the image. But 
A rough paper sometimes gets in the way of fine detail, especially when it's a smaller drawing. As I said earlier, I recommend using a paper that falls in between these two. Something smooth enough for details with just the right amount of texture to hold the charcoal. For this, I recommend using, uh, using a hot pressed paper at 200 grams, 210 to 300 grams. But if you, if you decide to scale up your work, uh, you can get away with using 400 to 600, 600 grams. But keep it in mind that these are more expensive. The fourth thing on the list is drawing size. How does size affect detail and how smooth your drawing turns out? By optical illusion. You see, the larger a drawing is, the further away you need to be to see the entire image. This means even though you can see the paper tooth up close, as you step away to view the entire image, the tooth slowly disappears, leaving a much smoother appearance. Another way size can affect your drawing is details. The smaller the drawing, the harder it is to achieve details. But as you scale up your work, you would realize that all your drawing materials become more precise due to the difference in size. And this would allow you to achieve extreme details. If you ever felt like you've maxed out your limits with detailing, just scale up your work. Detailing gets easier the larger your work is. Moving on to how you can use both charcoal and graphite in a cohesive way. There are two ways I like to do this. The first way is paper texture and the second is pressure. Paper texture is very important if you want these two materials to work well together. Charcoal adheres better to textured paper but graphite adheres pretty well to any paper texture, making it more versatile in this aspect. So if you want to combine them both, you have to think about what's best for charcoal first before graphite. But you don't have to compromise completely. You just have to find a paper that falls in between these two. A paper that is reasonably smooth with just the right amount of texture to hold charcoal. After choosing your paper, the next thing to keep in mind is the amount of pressure used when applying either charcoal or graphite. I can't say this enough but under no circumstance should you use too much pressure when applying these materials. By doing this, you drive the materials deeper into the paper, filling up the paper too. What this does is this makes it more difficult to add more layers on top of your drawing more difficult to erase or create highlights. You risk damaging your paper in the process and graphite shine is directly linked to pressure applied. Like the more pressure you apply with graphite, the more it shines. With that being said, I tried to cover as much as I could while keeping the video as short as I could. But do leave a comment, tell me what you think, tell me if this video was helpful and tell me what you would like to see in the future videos. I intend to make more comprehensive videos like this. So leave a comment and tell me if this video was helpful and yeah, and I can, you know, try to make them better, I guess. Yeah.